Welcome to today's video. This is a running video with regards to the Zwift Run Pod. This is available from the Zwift website. In February 2023, it was available for £17.50, but now it's about £35 plus £6 shipping. Uh, it is one of the cheapest run pods, or foot pods as they're called, you can get on the market, and it also can connect to other devices such as a Garmin watch when you're not using Zwift. So what do you need to do with this? The actual run pod looks like this. And it's three parts, I know you can only see two here, but basically the base, you've got the run pod, foot pod itself, and then within there is a battery. The battery required for this is a CR2032. So I'd advise getting quite a few of these. You can usually get about 20 off Amazon for about five pounds, so good to have a spare. You fit this to your shoe, so just take the shoe like this. Zwift recommend putting it about here, but I have seen YouTube videos and reviews of this that say it's quite difficult to get off when you put it on. So some people say put it on this lace, and then when you finish, you can just pull the laces out and away you go fitting a new battery or putting it on a different shoe. Also, if you leave it on the shoe and you go running, apparently that wears down the battery quite a lot as well. So if you have a dedicated pair of running shoes, probably best to put it on that and practice clicking it on and off. Fit the run pod, like so. Just put that underneath, it should fit nicely. Again, I have seen on the internet that this is not a great idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You want the uh, textured part pointing towards the bottom of the shoe. Just put it in like this, just pull it from underneath, and you want to be turning it, I think it's clockwise, to click it in. You'll hear a click, and there you go, there it is, and now it's fitted. Once you start running with the chute, you'll see a green light appear on there to show it's active. And then to remove it, you just twist it anti-clockwise, and it should snap off. Let's try that. It's quite hard to hold, but worst case scenario, oh, it comes off really easy. I don't know what everybody was moaning about. Once your treadmill's ready, you're logged into Zwift and you've got the foot pod installed, you need to search for it by selecting run from the paired devices. Uh, choose run speed and cadence, that's the metrics provided by the run pod. You can see there's Zwift run pod 7.1, the 7.1 indicates a number which correlates to the back of your run pod, so if there's a few in the family, you know which one's yours. Select that and select it for cadence. You might want to pair it up with a heart rate to get the most out of your metrics, such as a Garmin watch broadcasting or heart rate strap you can get off Amazon or eBay for around 20 pounds. Let it search. Once it's found them, it will remember them for next time, so you don't have to do this. If there's a new firmware available for the foot pod, that will be available here as well, and it can automatically update the firmware. On first run, you need to calibrate the foot pod, and you do this by setting your running speeds, your slow, normal, and fast, and then running at that speed for a certain amount of time on the treadmill. Make sure you set the treadmill to the same speed. And also the mistake I made was that Zwift is in kilometers per hour, and my treadmill was in miles an hour, so I had to do it twice. But you can just do it whenever you want to by clicking the spanner icon at the beginning of the pairing screen. Now you're good to go, click OK, it load up Zwift. You can choose whether to do an event, or you can choose whether to do uh, a workout which is structured, it'll tell you when to run, when to go fast and slow and that kind of thing. When you do that though, you need to select your running pace, whether you're a fast, slow, medium rider, or you can just choose a world to go in for a run for and just uh, chill and run through the world there. A lot of the settings for the game can be accessed when you're in a world. One of the ones I mentioned earlier was setting the miles or kilometers. You can do that from going down to measurements, imperial obviously will be miles and feet, metric will be kilometers and meters. Now you're good to go, get walking, get running. Remember that the measurements you get are probably not gonna be 100% accurate, so take it with a pinch of salt. Enjoy it, it makes meetings while you're at work, or working from home a bit more enjoyable and get something out of it. And it's a good break from when you don't fancy doing a ride. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos in this series about Zwift running and Garmin watches and getting your old treadmill up and running with Zwift. Zwift running is free at the minute, so definitely give it a try. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments if you've got any questions and I'll get back to you. Cheers.